What is going on y'all on Warren cars back again with another car buyer's guide today we're going to be going over the Audi S4 specifically the B8.5 obviously there is a B8 and then B8.5 is going to be the facelifted version of that however there are quite a few changes with the facelift um and I was trying to focus specifically on the 8.5 because that's what compete specifically with the 340i and the c43 like there's kind of some overlap there with the b8 uh specifically not the 8.5 um the model years don't exactly line up with what i was going over this week so yeah in continuation with what i'm going over this week we are going over cars that are an alternative for an m car an amg or like an rs car if you can't afford one or like that's not really what you want you want something a little bit more dailyable these cars are perfect for you so um, on Monday, we went over the 340i, not the M340i, the G20. We went over the F30 340i. Uh, yesterday, we went over the C43 slash uh, C450 AMG. And then today, we're going to be going over the S4. The thing is, Audi always had their middle of the line, uh, middle of the line lineup, I guess, for back, lack of, for back of letter terms. <laughs> Um, with the S line, it was A and then S and then RS. With BMW and Mercedes, you just had the regular, uh, for example, BMW, you had the 3 Series, and then you had the M3. And then for Mercedes, you had the three, C300, and then you had the C63 AMG. There was nothing in between. Um, they started to come out with models that would appear in between, but they weren't really marketed as such, such as a 335. Obviously, that's been out for a while, since 2007. But it was never marketed as like a mid-range between the regular version and the M. It was just a higher version. It's just a higher spec regular version. Now they have a totally new dedicated section for mid-range line or mid-range models. As in the M followed by three numbers as opposed to one number. So you have the M340i, the M540i. Um, yeah. And then so basically, same thing with Mercedes. They had the regular amgs hand-built amgs and then you had the um production line vehicles now they make amgs on a production line with the 43s and the 53s so um yeah they were just this is basically the time where the middle of the the segment models started to culminate into its own individual brand um and they were just copying audi because audi has had been doing this all along with the s line of cars not s line and talking trim i'm talking about the s cars the middle of the road cars not the rs cars not the a's just the s cars anyway before we get into the features options and problems some quick announcements if you haven't already joined my discord all you have to do is click on the link in the description this is where i post all the notes as well as giving you a direct line of communication with me if you have any questions about cars or if you want to ask anyone else in the discord you know about any type of cars Shout out to Claro. He said he's going to America tomorrow for vacation. I didn't even know he wasn't from America. So shout out to Claro. He's visiting America. Um, also, if you join my Discord, you have the eligibility to win $50. All you got to do is join the Discord, like and comment on a video as well as subscribe. And then finally share a video or reel with like a friend or a family member, someone you can put it in a group. It doesn't matter to me. Just share the video um, and join the Discord as well as like, comment and subscribing. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm working on Discord, y'all. I know it's pretty weak right now. There's not a lot going on. It's just me posting the notes from the show. Um, but I will be adding more channels, more voice channels, more uh, car-specific channels in terms of maybe I'm going to organize by brand or maybe I'm going to have a channel where everyone can post up their cars. Um, yeah, like a virtual car show type of thing. We'll figure it out. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Cologne or fragrance of the day. Blue de Chanel Parfum. As you can see, there is barely any left because this is such a good scent classic timeless fragrance in my opinion i do like the chanel edp or the chanel or blue de chanel edp better than the parfum um the parfum just smells a little bit more mature the edp smells just has a better like off the off the nozzle scent this one it kind of takes a while to develop it has the same obviously the same blue de chanel characteristics as the whole edt edp and parfum but the parfum is a little bit more um mature and toned down but because it's toned down it it lasts a lot longer and it's a lot um more rich of a scent it's hard to describe the edp kind of is a uh, much more focused on the top notes the parfum is much more focused on the bottom notes specifically this um i believe the edp has an incense note that replaces uh the parfum replaces the incense note with just more of a woody 
scent. So less smoky, more woody. Anyway, let's move back to cars. So moving on, we have uh, already kind of gave you a little bit of rundown of the S4, but let's go into a little bit more detail with the features, options, and problems. So let's bring this over here, actually. Get these notes out of here and over here. So as I mentioned, we're just going to be going over the B8.5 specifically. That went from model years 2013 to 2016. And it used the 3 liter supercharged V6 engine, the 3.0T, which uh, is interesting that they call it a T because it's actually a supercharged car. And uh, the actual successor to this, the B9, actually uses a turbo V6, and I believe it's still called a th the 3.0T, but it's now actually turbo. This car makes 333 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. So pretty potent car. Um, so what's confusing about the S4 and the S5 is that the S5 actually used the V8 at the same time as the S4 using the supercharged V6, even though they are on the same uh, chassis code, B8 and B8.5. Obviously, the B8s and the 8.5s, don't, I don't believe they line up year to year exactly between the S and the S5. However, the B8 S5, not the 8.5, but the B8 used a 4.2 liter V8. Um, and then for the B8.5 S5, they used this uh, 3 liter supercharged V6. And what's also interesting is that in all Cabrio, so all convertible S5s, they used the V6, no matter if it was... Um, I, I can't remember if it's because all convertibles are B8.5 or they actually used... No, I, I believe... No, no, no. Going back. They had a convertible in 2010, and that convertible had a V6 while the coupe had a V8. They all utilize Quattro all-wheel drive, obviously. Uh, the B8.5 goes from a Torsen-style diff to an Audi Crown gear differential. So basically, it allows uh, more of a torque split between the front and rear, meaning that you can send more power to the front or more power to the rear when compared to before. Before, it was kind of locked in to where it was at more closer to a 50-50 split. However, with the Audi Crown gear differential, you can send 70% 70 of the power to the front wheels or 85% of the power to the rear wheels at a given time. And in terms of transmission, they either came with the 7-speed DSG, so a dual-clutch transmission, or you could get a 6-speed manual. For the B8.5 S4, there aren't too many options because a lot of things were standard. However, there are two trim levels you got to keep in mind even though the trim levels don't really mean a lot on their own it's more of what options are specifically in your car those two trim levels are going to be premium plus and prestige prestige is obviously going to come with more standard features however most of those if not all those features that come in prestige you can option onto a premium plus car individually so some might have literally everything but one option to make it a prestige car but it's still more option than some prestige cars because prestige um some uh, well prestige cars and premium so okay let me just restart Pre prestige cars are better than premium but a prestige car won't have everything that a fully loaded premium plus car will so you have to actually fully load the prestige in order to have every single thing that a fully loaded premium plus will meaning that some options don't carry over between premium and prestige it gets kind of confusing. Obviously, Prestige is going to be more standard features. However, you can have a Premium Plus with a bunch of options that has more standard features than a base Prestige, if that makes sense. So, again, going through what are the things you can customize with your Audi S4 B8.5. You can change the transmission, so you can get either a dual clutch or an, uh, a manual, as I mentioned before. You can get a sport suspension calibration, which basically gives you a sportier ride. You can get dynamic steering and adaptive dampening suspension. So it's basically adaptive suspension is what this is. It comes also with dynamic steering. It's kind of a package deal. The sports differential, big option here. You really want to make sure that the the, uh, the car is a sports differential. Audi drive select, that is standard on S4s. Um, which is weird because they always try to like emphasize that you need to get drive select. However, on all S4s I looked at, they had drive select. So I'm not sure about what S4s didn't come with drive select. Another option is adaptive Xenon headlights plus, um, or yeah, adaptive Xenon headlights plus, and then it comes with uh, LED daytime running lights. The seat material, you can either get a leather seat or a leather and Alcantara seat. Also the seat type, there's the uh, comfort seats and the sports seats. Um, also, the Bang & Olufsen system, 14 speakers, 505 watts. This is an option for 2015. Nah, I mean, 
So this is a standalone option from 2015 plus, but it comes on the prestige cars standard. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is what I'm talking about. You can get a premium plus with Bang & Olufsen if you want, but only 2015 plus. You can choose the color of the decorative inlays, so the trim color. Um, Audi MMI nav package. We'll go over what the package entails. Driver assist package, black optic package, technology package, driver assistant package, high gloss black package. Kind of the same thing as optic black or black optic package, but has a little bit of changes. These are just changes between 2014 and 2015. And then for prestige packages, 2015 plus, they come standard with adaptive Xenon Plus headlights with LED DRLs, MMI, NAV, Audi Connect, color driver, info system, Bang & Olufsen parking system, and rear view camera. This is just presti this is prestige in general. I don't know why I wrote 2015 plus. Prestige in general, this is basically what it's going to come with. Um, this is kind of a basic overview of the packages. We're going to look at specifics right now. Um, it's just, it was just hard to kind of type all this out because there are lots of nuances with these packages because they change year to year. But uh, yeah, there's only four years we're gonna have to go over, so not too many. So here we have a 2015. This is gonna be a build sheet. We can come back to this one. Here, uh, this is gonna be a 2014. This is gonna just basically explain the specifications and packages that came on the 2014 S4. You say it says 2013, but that means 2014 model year. Um, but either way, same thing for us. So. Uh, we can see that the the infotainment technology, as as I mentioned before, the MMI, these are going to be options that you can get. MMI, Audi Connect, Color Driver System, Audi Concert Radio with 10 speakers. It's going to be the standard speaker system. Bang & Olsen is going to be the upgrade. HD radio technology, Sirius satellite radio, Sirius traffic with four-year subscription, Audi music interface, Bluetooth, garage door opener, advanced key, keyless start, stop and entry. I highly suggest that you find a car with Audi advanced key as well. Adaptive cruise control is always good. Audi side assist, Audi drive select, both of those things. Audi drive select. It says two right here. Hold on. Let me just zoom in right here because I'm trying to read this. Audi Drive Select 3 because I just want to get the available equipment. See your dealer. Okay, so I guess it was an option. As they say, even though most of the cars, if not all the cars I looked at, had Drive Select, so that is an option. Make sure you get Drive Select on your S4. You don't want to not get that. That is a huge option. It allows you to change... Um, if you have a DSG, it allows you to change the transmission shifting. It changes the suspension. I believe it changes the steering as well. If you have a manual one, it obviously it's not going to change the transmission shifting, but it will stiffen up the suspension and I believe the steering too. And then also parking system plus with the rear view camera. For available packages, this was the Audi MMI navigation package. It came with the Nav Plus with voice control system, Audi Connect, color driver information system, and HD radio technology, Sirius XM radio, and parking system plus with rear view camera. So basically it came with all the technology options that we talked about here and then driver assistance package basically filled in the rest of those options adaptive cruise control dynamic steering and drive select so the dynamic steering as i mentioned is going to be part of that drive select system when you switch between the modes it changes the suspension the steering and the transmission so this was a 2013 model let's look at the 2014 obviously it's going to remain pretty much the same but you'll see that uh, some options did change. As you can see here, they uh, they added the uh, black optics package for the 2014 model year. We can see that has the gloss black Audi single frame grille. Gloss black trim around the exterior windows, body colored exterior side mirror housing. So this is a big difference. A lot of uh, people will look at an S car. So S4, S5, S3, they'll be like, well, it's supposed to have silver mirror caps. That's what's distinguishable or that's the distinguishing feature of an S car, like off the bat. You look at it, okay, S car, if it has body colored ones, it is an A car. However, if you get the black optic package, it does actually change the mirror housing to body colored. So if you have the body colored mirror housing in combination with the black single frame grill and black trim around the windows on an S car, so with quad tips on the rear, you'll know that that is a black optics package. The driver's assistant package pretty much remains the same. The Audi adaptive cruise control dynamic steering. However, it does not come with um, Audi drive select. I believe this is when Audi drive select became standard. Um, it says right here, there's nothing even right near it. So I believe it is standard before there was a three saying the three is available equipment in 2014. I believe this to be fact that is the drive select came standard and only on the 2013 model was it an option. Um, but clarify that if it's not true that's what i'm getting at based on my research i have not seen um an actual s4 without drive select in my personal experience cool all right um so yeah those are the options for that as you can see everything else pretty much stays the same also you can also 
you can see here the option for the adaptive Xeno Plus headlights. You mentioned that before, gloss black trim around the exterior windows. You can get that without getting the black optic package, which is interesting. Quad exhaust outlets, of course, that's standard for an S car. Um, yeah, sports differential, dynamic steering, and adaptive dampening suspension. Get all that stuff. Very important to get that sport differential. That will add a lot to the resale value. Let's look at the 2015. Just see uh, pretty much everything still stays the same, except as you see here, the high gloss black, the high gloss package replaced the black optic package. Um, this came with the 19 inch 5V spoke design wheels in a titanium finish. This one had the five, uh, five arm rotor design wheels. I believe these, I think these are the same wheels. Well, well actually there's a wheel chart at the bottom of this. We're gonna take a look in a second. Let's just uh, continue with the options real quick. Um, yeah, so we can see high gloss, black optics change the high gloss. Um, we're about to look at the wheel. So 19, five V spoke. What does that look like? Nineteen five V spoke. Oh, I can't read. I was looking at S fives. So this is the 19, five V spoke. This is going to be the new black optic wheel for the old black optic wheel. It was actually this one. I prefer the old black optic wheel. I really like these wheels. These five arm rotor design wheels, these five V spoke design wheels are okay. But in terms of my favorite wheels, I think they would be the five arm rotor designs as well as the peelers right here. So the five second spoke designs, these two are going to be my favorite wheel. Uh, going back to the options, we can see also here that uh, drive select is not an option again because it was because it became standard. Um, yeah, and then moving on to our final, or we're looking at a 2016. This is actually going to show this option specifically. I just wanted to bring this up so you can see exactly what options were available with the last model year, because this one's important. Um, so we have the premium plus, these are going to be the standalone options of the premium plus. So the, most of the cards you're going to see out online are going to be premium plus prestige is going to be that step up. So this is what the premium plus comes with. Um, standard you have the adaptive <laughs> adaptive the adaptive dampening suspension the sports differential the audi sport five segment spoke uh design silver finish wheels so i believe those are going to be the peelers 18 inch 245 all season tires carbon atlas decorative in inlays layered aluminum slash black decorative wood inlays and rear passenger thorax side airbags. So as you can see for the final model year, a lot of the stuff that we were looking for in terms of options come standard. You got adaptive dampening suspension is standard. The sports differential is standard and the peelers are standard for the premium plus, which is really good. And then you have these available packages that you also need to take into consideration, the technology package. Big package here, if you're not getting a prestige, you have to get the technology packet. You have to get the technology package in a premium plus car if you don't get prestige because the technology package basically makes your car into a prestige. Um, I'll explain in a second right here. So it comes with the nav. It comes with the Audi Connect. It comes with the color driver information system. comes with the Bang & Olsen. This is a key option right here. So if you're getting a premium plus, um, just make sure it has the Bang & Olsen so you, you know that it has a technology package. Um, this specifically is for 2016 though. It also comes with Audi side assist and the parking system with the rear view cameras, rear acoustic sensors. So it has the sensors in the back as well. Another package you want to look out for, it's a little bit more rare though, are the fine Napa leather seats, uh, or the fine Napa leather package. It comes with the fine Napa leather seats and the leather door armrest and pulls. Hard to find because uh, the leather, of course, the cars are going to be standard in leather. So you really have to pay attention to see if this one has the fine Napa leather package. And then, as I mentioned before, the same thing with uh, the black optic high gloss uh, package the five the audi uh, sport with the five v spokes which were those wheels we looked at earlier these ones right here oh wait this is hold on this one right here these are going to be these wheels so this is going to be standard on the black optics package um obviously because it's 2015 carry over to 2016 and then this is going to be the prestige package so the prestige comes with everything that you saw on premium plus Plus what we're going to talk about here. So it comes with the infotainment technology. Uh, I, I guess it's a package uh, because it's it's literally the technology package. <laughs> so premium prestige is the premium plus with the technology package. Um, also has the adaptive Xenon plus headlights with LED daytime running lights, as well as static cornering lights. These are going to come uh, standard with the premium plus over the premium. Um, I'm trying to see the, the wheel or the... Yeah, you can see Audi drive selected standard. Um, 
yeah so uh moving on to the standalone options for prestige these are options that you can get for prestige which is weird because look the pr standalone options for oh okay i'm sorry i framed this wrong these are going to be options for the s4 premium plus not standardly equipped features that's over here apologies for that you can see the standalone options for the prestige are pretty much the same as the standalone options for the premium plus so you can really get if you get a premium plus with technology package and all the standalone options you can pretty much get a prestige card but it'll still be labeled as premium plus so you have to pay attention and then you have the available packages for the prestige the driver's assistant package which will come with dynamic steering and audi adaptive cruise control which you can't get for premium plus fine nether, fine fine nether <laughs> the fine nether lapa package <laughs> uh as a, same package as before so as you can see prestige for the last model year prestige for most model years is literally just a premium plus with the technology package along with maybe the adaptive xenon lights there's not much of a difference um it all matters on standalone options because that's how you can differentiate a car between the rest of them the uh, package simply isn't enough you can have a base level premium a base level a, a base level prestige with less options than a loaded premium plus as you can see right here um, so yeah keep that in mind that the premium plus prestige uh names for the trims don't really mean a lot but it can get you started um but don't discount a car just because it's premium plus cool all right and then finally let's go over the color options because we didn't do that forgot to do that so uh these are going to be the color options we're looking for the s4 so 2015 color options we got black obviously black slash leather or black leather slash alcantara black leather slash silver alcantara black fine napa leather black slash lunar fine napa leather black slash magma fine napa leather black slash chestnut brown fine napa leather black perforated milano leather chestnut brown perforated milano leather lunar silver fine napa leather so these are going to be uh you know your your interior seat and materials colors then you have your inlay colors you have matte brush matte brush matte brush aluminum phantom black carbon atlas rs design carbon fiber fine grain ash natural wood layered aluminum black wood you can see what car let's actually just stick to the s4 cards so it's this is an s4 uh material this is an s4 material this is an s4 material yeah so basically just uh aluminum carbon atlas or uh, the layered aluminum slash black wood. Those are really only the options you have. And then in terms of exterior colors, you got a ton of different exterior colors. Um, let's just actually look at an S5 or an S4 one specifically, because the other one had a ton of extra information. So these are going to be your exterior colors specifically for 2016. And of course, if you know Audi, they change the colors every year. So this isn't going to be all the colors. However, it's going to be a majority of them, probably like. 80% of the colors that you'll see on all the B8.5 S4s. Moving down, we have the S4 Sport Seat. Um, I'd mentioned earlier the Comfort Seat and Sport Seats. I was getting confused uh, with the standard seats and Sport Seats in the S in the A4. But for the S4, it only came with the Sport Seat. It just depends on what colors you're going to get. Um, it's funny that they don't even mention it here, but a really rare color is having the middle in um, blue, Nagara Blue Alcantara. So a Nagaro blue exterior with the black and Nagaro blue interior is a super rare car. I guess maybe it didn't come on 2016 or it's maybe that rare that they didn't even put it on the brochure. But as you can see, my point with this was to show you what an S4 sports seat looks like compared to the A4 sports seat. The S4 sports seat is going to have these uh, shoulder parts right here. Um, yeah, that pretty much goes over the specs. Let's go back to the features, options, and problems and go over the problems so we don't forget that. So not too many problems with the 3.0T uh, TFSI engine. It's pretty stout, pretty reliable. However, there are some things you need to keep in mind when you're buying these used because, uh, yeah, you're buying a used vehicle. So not everything is going to be perfectly uh, working or perfect working order you want to make sure the thermostat and the water pump are good these are going to be places where coolant can leak um yeah you just don't want to make you want to make sure that there's no leaks with this car coolant oil anything these have had uh thermostat and water pump failures not only with the gaskets but with the mechanism itself i'm talking about the water pump 
This is mainly on B8 cars, not B8.5 cars. However, it is still seen on B8.5 cars just to a lesser degree. Make sure that there are no leaks coming from the thermostat or water pump. And then make sure your thermostat opens and closed properly. Make sure it's not stuck open. Make sure it's not stuck closed. The heat exchanger, you want to make sure that is good and not um, leaking. This is basically just uh, is the heat exchanger for the supercharger. Spark plugs and coils. For all force induction cars, you're going to find issues with spark plugs and coils. Um, if you're having any misfires, this is going to be where you want to look first. Spark plugs and coils. Hey, shout out to you, Bulldog. Shout out to Bulldog in the chat. This is the first time I'm seeing you, man. Uh, do I know you? <laughs> anyway. Back to leaks. Make sure that there's no oil coming out of the spark, the spark plug. The valve cover gasket. Um, this could be an issue. Hey man, shout out to shout out to Bulldogs in the chat, man. That's why I like to see people actually contributing to the chat. Um, you want to make sure that the uh, PCV valve is good. These are seen to uh, basically if the PC valve is bad. You'll see some oil maybe around the spark plug area. So if you take out the coil and take out the spark plug, it'll be kind of oily in that area, or maybe oily on the end of the spark plug. That just means oil is coming back in from your uh, ventilation system into your intake and you're getting oil and all over your <laughs> internals of the, the engine, your valve train. You want to make sure that the PC valve is good and you, you don't have excess oil coming back into your intake. You also have an issue with the timing chains in terms of if it rattles for more than three seconds after startup, it might be an issue with the tensioners. However, if it rattles for one to three seconds uh, when you first start up cold, that's perfectly okay. Just make sure it doesn't rattle as it starts to warm up. You also have the secondary air injection system. The valve gets dirty with carbon. This also has to do with the PCV valve system. Make sure that the secondary air uh, injection system valve is clean. Um, if it gets dirty with carbon, it can cause that system to not work. You also have DSG issues up to 2014. So 2013, 2014 are going to have the most issues with DSG, the dual clutch transmission. So if you want to avoid those issues, for the most part, get a 2015 or 2016 model. And if you get a 2013 or 2014, just uh, keep in the back of your mind that there were some issues with the solenoids for the DSG. You also had issues with the cats. Um, yeah, these are just cat issues that can be seen with many different cars. You want to make sure that the cats aren't uh, falling apart because that can actually suck the debris from the cat back into the engine, like on over rev when the intake shuts off and the gases from the exhaust suddenly have uh, no more pressure pushing them out. In fact, negative pressure occurs, pulling them back into the combustion chamber. And um, if you have disintegrating cats, that's going to pull in the dust that comes out of your catalytic converters back into your combustion chamber, and that can actually cause scoring and other issues. So make sure that the cats are good. Engine mounts, these have electronically controlled hydraulic engine mounts, which is insane to me because engine mounts in my head are a static piece of equipment. They just literally bolt or hold two things together. But in Audi terms, it is an electronic and a, uh, a hydraulic system. It uses electronics to control the oil. And I guess that moves the engine and keeps it um, in the perfect spot. I'm not too sure exactly how it looks, but the engine mounts, if they're leaking hydraulic fluid, if they're leaking anything if they're wet you're gonna have to change the engine mounts which is expensive because you have to lift up the engine it's gonna be a you know a time-consuming costly job just make sure that the engine mounts are good it's hard to know if the engine mounts are good but if there it if it has an electronic failure it will show up on the computer when you run the codes so just make sure to run the codes on cars like these because the engine mounts are you know it's it's like a surprise fix that you really can't like you if you don't know about it you're not going to plan ahead for it and then finally, if you have a dual clutch car, you can actually check the amount of launches that the car had. Just go to uh, a dealer with the factory computer and you can check the amount of launches. I believe 200 launches is when they stopped, uh, when the computer actually shut off the launch control feature. So you want to make sure that the car is in close to or above 200 launches because obviously if you get this car, you're going to want to launch it a couple of times. And if someone's already took all the fun out of it, then there's no really, it's not really a point in getting a car like that. You can always find another example that hasn't been beat on as much. Cool. So that wraps up the features, options, and problems. Let's take what we learned to the actual ads we see on the internet. We're going to start off with Facebook Marketplace, and then we're going to work our way over to Auto Trader, and then finally Car Gurus. Our first example here, we have a black 2013 S4 Premium Plus model. 
You can see it's on some aftermarket wheels. It's on some Vorsteiner wheels. Okay, cool. You got your picture in a hanger. Very upper class. Very nice. You have your two-tone seats. Alcantara and leather. Not two-tone, but two material seats. Dual, dual material. I don't really know how to call it. Anyway, you got our, our Alcantara and leather combo seats. Black interior. We can see this also has the nav because it um, has the... Uh, Hold up. Oh, this is a 2013 and it does not have drive select. So I was talking earlier about how all the cars I looked at had drive select. This one does not look like it has drive select because drive select would be this button right here. Um, but we're going to we're going to keep that on ice. So this car does not have drive select off the bat. Let's also see what he has to say about the car. The check engine light is on. This is because one of the air inlets in use during the cold weather is clogged. Not to worry because the car is too. Okay, so needs a carbon clean. It has 135,000 miles. And they're asking 15 grand. It's not a bad car. It looks pretty clean, although the pictures do look a little bit edited. And they are kind of like macro shots. Not really anything showing true condition of the car. They are made to look nice. See, the stock wheels are the peelers. Very nice. Um, yeah. Other than that, the interior seems pretty clean. It does not have drive select, which is unfortunate. That is a huge option to get on one of these cars. If it doesn't have drive select, it might not even have the sports differential either. And because of that, also having 135,000 miles for this car, I'd be willing to go up to $11,000. Cool. Moving on to our next ad on Facebook. We have a 2014. This is going to be a prestige car with 98,000 miles. See what he has to say about the car. Audi maintained two owner prestige edition window tint. Audi service every 10K miles, including recent 95K inspection. Has been very reliable. Two minor cosmetic defects, a chip on windshield. Small and zero impact of its function. Oh, it has a dent from a branch on the trunk. Okay, so nothing really about the car mechanically. Just some cosmetic stuff. Um, some information, not too much. Let me see on the interior, it has the Alcantara and leather combo seats. As well as having drive select, you can see the button here. As opposed to this previous vehicle. Which did not have drive select. You only had the trash control off button right there. However, you can see this one, the drive select right here. So this one actually does have drive select, which is great. But it is a 2014, so um, I believe it was standard. 2013s are the only cars that Drive Select had to be included as an option. So this car isn't too bad. 98,000 miles, 98.5. They're only asking 16.5 for a 2014 Prestige. So this is going to come with a lot more options than the Premium Plus 2013 model we just looked at. It has the Drive Select. It has all the safety features. It has the Bang & Olufsen radio. It has all the safety features. It has the Bang & Olufsen stereo. This car is actually pretty good on paper. For the price, you know, we could do a little bit better. 16.5 isn't too bad, though. It's pretty close, considering it is a 2014 Prestige. However, for me, I really wouldn't want to go over 13.5 for this car. Moving on to our next ad, we have a blue example on some nice wheels. I do believe these are S4 wheels, but maybe from a different generation. Actually, I'm not even going to guess on that. Let's take a look at what wheels these are because i have i'm failing to recognize these wheels um yeah i'm not too sure these wheels look like they're from maybe like a previous s4 or something not too sure it doesn't say anything there is no information on this car at all let's take a look maybe we can find something on the inside premium plus car off the bat Let's see if it has any special features. We could also see that it is a manual car, six speed manual, even though it says automatic transmission. So there's no description. The transmission is wrong. I wonder what else they got wrong about this car. We can also see it has a carbon fiber inlay as well as a two tone leather seats, white and black interior. Very nice spec on this car. It is going to be a blue car with the carbon trim with the white and black two tone seats. Very, this car looks manual as well. This is basically as good as it's going to get. 122,000 miles though is a little bit high, but because of the trim, because of the spec of this car, um, this would be something that I consider getting, but for the right price. There's nothing in terms of description. Let's keep looking at the photos. 
clean engine bay we can see maybe some aftermarket stuff with the intake but not too much going on under the hood has a big aftermarket spoiler but other than that it looks pretty nice for 122,000 miles i'd say given the condition of the car it is clean it is a manual it has a really nice trim um, it has a carbon fiber along with the two-tone seats as well as being blue on the outside simply because of the miles I'd be willing to go up to 15 grand for this car. Actually, give me one second. I'm trying to look see something. Uh, I'm just gonna look something up. Okay, yeah. Anyway, back to, sorry, that was, I was got a little sidetracked there. Anyway, yep, uh, prestige car, as I mentioned, 13, uh, three for that one. This was a different car. 15 grand for this one, simply because the spec is superb. Moving on to our next ad, we have a 2014 Premium Plus on the five arm rotor wheels. I really like these wheels. These wheels and the peelers are my favorite wheels. Let's see what the spec looks like. Clean car overall. It is a manual as well. Very nice. You can also see that the interior is going to be that black and Alcantara combo. And then with the silver aluminum trim. See this. We can see any packages. It has the black optic package. That's why it has the five arm rotor wheels along with MMI nav plus package. Cool, cool. Um, what else does it have? It is a premium plus. Let's see if we can. The speakers are going to be with the silver or the aluminum um, bezel, meaning that it is a BNO system. And I mean, we could have read the description. It says everything here. 2014, six speed manual, 94,000 miles, clean title, no lean, sports differential, Audi MMI nav plus, black optics, Bang & Olufsen, Audi side assist, Alu optic trim. So the Alu optic trim, if you didn't know what that is, the Alu Optic trim basically is the same thing as the Black Optic trim, except uh, it adds this um, supercharged badge to the side instead of saying V6T. <laughs> so I guess they were, I don't know why they made that thing a change, but basically they got tired of people thinking that it was a turbocharged car. They made a whole new uh, trim you can get to add the uh, supercharged badges on the side. Or added clarification. Cool. All right. They're asking 19 grand for this. It has 94,000 miles. So not as high as the other cars we we're looking at, but it is a premium plus. Granted, it is a pretty loaded premium plus. I'm trying to see. Yep. It has pretty much everything. It has nav. It has Bang & Olufsen. It has black optics. It has pretty much everything you could have in a premium plus, maybe except for the adaptive headlights or whatever. 2014 premium plus with all the right options for 19 grand. It is a manual. So that that has something going for it. This is not as greatly spec as the last example we looked at. This one is definitely a better spec than this one. And I wanted to pay 15 for this, but it has 122,000 miles. I'd say because this one has 94,000 miles, I'd be willing to go up to 15.5 for this example here. And then we have another blue example. This one is going to be a 2015 prestige car. Let's take a look at the spec. So off the bat, we can see it has the uh, wood and metal inlay, the wood and metal combo inlay trim. Very nice, along with the Alcantara wood, <laughs> along with the Alcantara door inserts. You also see the two material, the dual material Alcantara and leather seats. Very nice. This is very similar spec to the other one, except the other one had carbon fiber doors. This one has the wood and metal inlay. This one is also an automatic car. We can also see that it has the Bang & Olufsen because it has the silver bezel around the speakers. So that is also good, but it is a prestige. So it comes standard with that, obviously. It has the high gloss black package. It has MMI. It has LED headlights with the LED. So it has the upgraded uh, headlight thing. So this is obviously going to have pretty much everything. It's prestige package. And... Um, 
I wish I could see whether it had the technology package or not. Um, I believe it does. Or I mean, if it, sorry. I wanted to see whether or not the prestige package had that, what's that extra package called? I'm tripping. There's too much stuff I got to memorize. Um, the, uh, let's see. The fine Napa leather package. And the driver's assistance package. Does it have that dynamic steering or adaptive cruise? Does it talk about dynamic steering or adaptive cruise? Yep, it has a driver's assist package, but nothing about the fine Napa leather package. This has the Napa. This has the leather and Alcantara combo, so I, I don't believe you can get a fine Napa leather car with Alcantara as well. Being that this is a 2015 Prestige with 93,000 miles, it has all the good options. Nothing really left out here. Um, I'd be around. It's a 2015 Prestige. I'd be around the. Uh, I'd be around the 17.5 mark for this car. 15.5 for this one. It's a 2014 Premium Plus manual. 17.5. Actually, for this one, I'd be around 17. It's not even a manual. I believe that the manual S4s are more valuable than the automatic, the DSG S4s. Um, so yeah, that's how I'm going to be pricing the manuals. And then moving on to our final example. We have a 2016. It's going to be a Premium Plus it was weird because I couldn't find any 2016 prestige cars. So I'm not sure if for 2016, they just didn't sell that many or they didn't sell any at all. And just pretty much you could get whatever options you wanted on a premium plus because prestige and premium plus are basically the same. A prestige is basically a premium plus with a technology package. So I'm wondering if for 2016, they just simply sold them all as premium plus and then you could option them however you wanted from the dealer. Anyway, let's see what we're working with this car. We have the peelers. I really like these wheels. Interior, you can as you can see, is all leather. Full leather interior. This is a 2016. No description at all, so we really don't know what it has and what it doesn't have. Uh, we see a blank button on the steering wheel. So you're obviously missing some options there. You can also see a whole slew of blank buttons on the middle here. Yeah, they want 18.5 for this car. It has 100 and 27,000 miles. Um, it is a 2016, but it looks like a premium plus and it looks like a premium plus with no options. Uh, it has carbon fiber inlays, but nothing special in terms of uh, the trims or the packages or anything like that. I'd say for this having 127,000 miles and they're asking 18.5, I'd be around the 14.5 mark for this car. Cool. Let's move on to Auto Trader. Our first add on Auto Trader, we have a 2014. This is going to be a Premium Plus, an S4 Premium Plus. You can see you got some nice photos. It's going to be in that gray green color. It's on the peelers. You can see it has an aftermarket air intake as well. Nothing really too much going on with this car. You can see it is also in leather, no Alcantara here as well as having the Bang & Olufsen sound system, as you can see by the silver bezels around the speakers. But yeah, nothing much going on here. It is gray on black, pretty simple spec. Let's see what he has to say about it. Preventative maintenance done, thermostat, water pump, PCV valve, new supercharger kit, valve cover gasket, fresh Michelin Pilot Super Sports. Dang, so this car actually has a lot of the work we talked about already done. So that is really good. This would be something that I'd really take into consideration simply because they literally addressed the stuff we talked about word for word. It's equipped with sport differential as well. So that's a plus. BNO sound system is also a plus. Minor ding on the driver's door. Minor crease on the driver's door. Custom exhaust. Okay. CTS turbo intake. RS style grill. Perfect interior. Never ate or smoked. Okay. I highly doubt that, but it has 95,000 miles. So very clean example though. I really like this car because it has all the right options. It's, it's a premium plus with all the right options. This is like one of those cars where it really doesn't matter if you get a premium or a prestige because this premium plus has all the right options. You have the sport differential, you have the BNO sound, you have all the maintenance stuff taken care of. Pretty much all you need in something like this. I'd say because it is a 2014 with 95,000 miles with everything done, I'd be willing to go up to $16,000 for this car. Moving on to our next ad, we have a 2013 S4 Premium Plus. So this car, we have to make sure it has Audi Drive Select or not, because it might not. What I'm seeing off the bat, though, is a fault of mine. I messed up here. I picked an ad with no interior pictures. Very unfortunate of me. Um, yeah. Does it say anything here about what options it has? Not at all. Okay. So 
what we're going off here the information they give they're asking 13 grand it has 137,560 miles, so 138,000 miles. That's 2013 first model year for the B8.5. I'd say because of the first model year, I, I'm going to assume it doesn't have drive select. I'm going to assume it doesn't really have anything because it's the first model year. The option packages were a little bit different for 2013 specifically. I'd be willing to go up to 10 grand for this car. Moving on to our next ad, we have a black S4 Prestige, which looks like it has the black optics package off rip because it has these wheels along with the blacked out trim let's see what else we've got going on here can also see that it has um the radar cruise control or the adaptive cruise control whatever this is it's the cruise control with the sensor this is a 2015 so it's going to have pretty much all the options that come standard coming standard we have the aluminum trim with the two-tone alcantara and black leather interiors See the aluminum trim on the doors and with the Alcantara inserts on the doors as well. You can also see because it is a prestige car, we have the Bang & Olufsen speakers with the silver surrounds. See the S4 kick plate. Very nice example, very clean. You can see the drive select right here. Very clean example. This is something I would like, I would look at. This is something I would look at simply because the trim is pretty spot on. This would be something I would look at simply because the spec is pretty much spot on. You have a black car with the black optics package with the white and black two tone interior, which is very cool. Let's see what he has to say about it. Audi S4 Prestige finished in brilliant black over lunar silver slash black interior. This vehicle is powered by, okay, blah, blah, blah. 19 inch uh, V spoke design wheels, blah, blah, blah. High gloss package, driver assistance package, Quattro oh, has a sports differential, has out adaptive sports suspension, rear side airbags. Yeah, so this is a really good car. It's prestige, has everything you'd want. And they're asking 1674. Granted, it has a ton of miles, 134,000 miles, but it did not look like it had that many miles at all. This car looked like it was in pretty decent shape. I'd say for having this many miles, um, because it is a 2015 Prestige and it has all the options I want, I'd still consider this car if I was looking for an S4. I'd be willing to go up to 13.5 for this car. Cool. And moving on to our next ad, we have a 2016. Again, a premium plus. I could not find a 2016 S4 that was prestige. I'm not sure why, but here we have a 2016 premium plus. 96,000 miles are asking 196 for it. Let's see what we're going. Let's see what we're working with on the inside. It is moonlight blue, which is a really cool blue. I like this blue a lot. It's like a gray blue. Interior looks very clean for 96,000 miles. The leather still looks very matte. It's not looking shiny or anything like that. No tears. Very nice interior. You can see it also has the carbon fiber trim. It's a 2016, so it's going to come standard with drive select, obviously. Very clean interior. Full leather, no Alcantara here. Just blue on black with the Bang & Olufsen with the carbon fiber trim. Very, very clean spec car. I like the spec a lot. It might not be the most outgoing spec. It might, might not be the most flashy spec. However, this spec is very clean. 96.7, they're asking, or 96,700 miles this car has, and they're asking 90, and they're asking 19.6. I'd say because this car is a 2016 last model year, that kind of bumps up the value a little bit. And the fact that it is such a clean spec, not only is it a clean spec, but the condition of the car is actually really clean itself. I'd say for this one, I'd be willing to go up to around 17 grand. I think that um, 17 grand might be a little bit high in terms of numbers for me, but 17 grand, I think this car, it has all the right packages. It's black optics. It has, um, it's a 2016. It has a cool interior spec. It's all leather, stupid clean with the carbon fiber. Just really nice spec. Yep. 16 grand for something like this. Or 17 grand for something like this. Anyway, moving on to our last ad on Auto Trader. We're looking at a 2015 Prestige S4. <laughs> Obviously, because we're looking at S4 today, right? This one's going to be in a silver color. We can see the wheels. Nothing too fancy going on with the wheels. These are going to be your standard S4 wheels for the 2015 model year. Let's see if there any let's see if they have any pictures of the interior. You can see it has the aluminum trim, standard aluminum trim with the Alcantara and leather combo interior uh, with the leather and Alcantara combo seats. 
This one also has a six speed manual, which is pretty cool. That's going to add some value there. However, looking at the price, 30 grand they're asking, or, and it only has seven and it has 75,000 miles. It's not like a little amount of miles. It's still a little bit of miles. Um, I don't know if it's worth 30 grand. Let's scroll down and see what they've done. Car is in excellent condition. 3.0 manual transmission. Last model year that uses manual transmission. Pink slip in hand. Who calls them pink slips? Top spec. Flat bottom wheel. That came standard on every single B8.5. Alcantara seats. Okay. Seat heating. Okay. Dual way climate control. <laughs> Bluetooth phone calls <laughs> like wow are you serious regular maintenance complete up to date incredibly reliable engine easily tuned if so desired great performance average 25 on the freeway so it has the rear differential which is cool it has a lot of good options here however the <laughs> maybe like three out of these five top specs are pretty much standard on all Audis let alone the S4 so um yeah he he may not know exactly what he has but he does have a good example and uh, yeah, he actually, I said may not know what he has. He definitely doesn't know what he has because he listed it for 30 grand. I'd say a 2015 manual car with only 75,000 miles. Obviously, 75 is not a little bit, but compared to the rest of them we're looking at, I'd say for having 75,000 miles and being a 2015 prestige manual car, I'd be willing to go up to $18,000. Cool. And then moving on to the last place we look at ads. Hey, shout out to the three people in the chat. Say what's up. I don't know if you're from Twitch or YouTube, but type in the chat. Say what's up. Let me know what cars you want to see on the channel. Um, also, join my Discord. I'm trying to get people in this Discord. I'm trying to build it up. It's going to be lit. Just uh, We just need more people. Cool. Our last place we look at for our ads. Our last place we look at for ads. Car gurus. First example is going to be a 2013 Prestige Sedan. So you can see it's in silver. Has some aftermarket grill, aftermarket wheels. Let's look at the interior spec. All leather. See if it has drive select. It does have drive select, which is good. This is a 2013, so drive select was an option that you had to actually get. But drive select is going to be this button right here. What else can we see? It has the check engine light on for some reason. Not sure if it needs a carbon clean or something like that, but that is something you also have to take into consideration. They're only asking 7,200 bucks. So let's see what's wrong with this car. This car is a clean title cylinder. <laughs> needs a tune up. I hate it when people say needs a tune up. This isn't the 1960s where you just needed to like tighten some things and like adjust your carburetor and your car will run great. A tune up means. A million different things on new cars it could mean you got you need whole new parts you know it's not just a tune-up it's not just i need to you know tweak some things here and there it means you need to get something fixed the check engine light is on it's more than a tune-up a tune-up is my car isn't making as good gas mileage as it used to not my check engine light is on so 7200 bucks he says it needs a tune-up he also says his uh loss is your gain these are all red flags in terms of an ad if you're uh not a mechanic if you are these could be green flags however you Definitely need to go take a look at this car in person, either by sending someone out there to look at the car or looking at it yourself. Speaking of that, if you're in the Atlanta or Miami area, those two areas, and you are looking for a car to buy, I'm actually offering a service to go look at the car and give you like an actual detailed rundown of the car, like kind of like a PPI, except maybe for a little bit less. And then, um, you know, I'm going to be a personal like a, like a asset to you instead of just being at the shop like we're going to communicate back and forth about the car and i'll give you my actual advice about it so yeah if you're looking at buying a car and it's like something that you're actually putting some thought into and you want a second like a third party's opinion and um it's in the atlanta or miami area which there are a lot of cars here so i wouldn't be surprised if people are looking at cars in this area um yeah just shoot me an email i'm actually going to make like a google doc so people can fill in their questions and um i can get it uh, like answer it in a more systematic way. But yeah, if you are interested in that service, you can hit me up and then we can talk further about it. Going back to this 2013 first model year for the B8.5. They only want $7,200 for it. Something is wrong with this car. It has a clean title and no accidents though. So if you're able to pick this car up for a good price and fix it, um, you could potentially make a killing because it is still a clean title. If you can fix this car, it has 179,000 miles. So if you could buy it at 7,200, say you bought it at the price he was asking, you put in maybe five or six grand into fixing it, uh, what you're around 12, 13 grand. You can probably, uh, <laughs> you're funny. I don't know what that means, but uh, 
No. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, yeah, so if you were putting five grand in this car and fix it up completely, you'd be around 13 grand. You could maybe sell for that. It has a ton of miles. So I would try to get this car for maybe under five grand. That way you have at least two or three grand of profit margin if you were to sell it in the future. Um, but no, uh, Bulldog, I only do car related stuff. No uh, shoulder stuff, nothing like that. <laughs> Moving on to our next ad, we have a 2013. Again, 2013, this one's on peelers. It's going to be a white car. It is a 2013, so we're going to have to make sure that it has all the options that we want because, again, a lot of options such as the Audi Drive Select came standard on 2014 plus. So we're going to be looking at that specifically. Looking at the interior, though, we can see that it is a full leather car. No Alcantara here with the carbon fiber trim. We can see the carbon fiber trim on the lower areas. However, it does have aluminum on the top areas, so kind of a split trim here. Wait, no, that's carbon fiber. I'm tripping. Yeah, it looks like aluminum, but that's just the lighting. It's carbon fiber. I think it's aluminum. Do they have a close-up of the gauges? Nope. Of course not. I mean, it doesn't look like carbon fiber, I'm going to be honest. But it has carbon fiber in other places, so we'll just say it has a carbon fiber interior. has the peelers. It has drive select. Pretty much everything you'd want on a 20 car... Pretty much everything you want on an S4, and this is a 2013, so that means uh, those things were actually optioned in, which is pretty cool. See drive select right here. Um, but yeah, other than that, 78,000 miles. They want 20 grand for it. It's a 2013, so it's gonna hold a little bit less value because of the first model year. However, 78,000 miles is pretty low for one of these. I'd say with having 78,000 miles being a first model year, however, having all the right options, does it have Bang and Olufsen? That's gonna make a difference. For me, at least, it does have Bang & Olufsen. You can see it has a silver surround on the speaker grill. I'd be willing to go up to $15,000 for this car. Moving on to our second and last ad, we have a 2015. This is going to be a Prestige S4 on peelers, as you can see. Let's look at the specs. Looking at the interior, we can see it is that two-tone black and Alcantara. Or it's going to be that leather and Alcantara interior. I also see the carbon here with the aluminum trim going around the dash. I like the way this car looks. It has a nice stance to it. Not sure if the wheels are spaced out or not. They look a little bit wide for uh, stock. They might be spaced out. Not too sure. But it does look good. We can see uh, nothing really fancy going on here. It's pretty much standard. You got the leather and Alcantara interior with the carbon on the center console as well as on the passenger side of the dash and on the doors. So pretty good options here, but it is a 2015. So a lot of this stuff was standard. 81,000 miles are asking 21.5 for it. You know, they're not too far off being a 2015 prestige, but for me, I really wouldn't want to go over. Um, yeah, I really want to would. I really wouldn't want to go over 70. Oh man. For, I'm just going to repeat everything. So for having 81,000 miles and they're asking 21.5, that's close because it is a 2015 Prestige with low-ish miles. However, it's a little bit high for me. I'd be willing to go up to 17.5 for this 2015 Prestige car. And then finally, we have a red example. This is going to be a 2014 Premium Plus. So you can see on the standard S4 rims. Let's look on the interior, see what the interior spec looks like. We can see that it is a two-tone red and black interior. Super nice interior with the aluminum trim on the center console as well as on the doors. Very nice spec, very unique. You really don't see the spec at all with two-tone red and black with the red exterior. One of my favorite specs so far. This would be something I'd look at simply because it's a unique spec and it's just it looks so much better than every other one we looked at. We can see. Um, let's see. So 2014. This one. <laughs> It's crazy. This is actually one of the few S. This is the only S4. <laughs> this is the only S4 we looked at that does not have nav. It's, it's horrible. Look how the non navs cars look. They just have a big empty space down here. And the nav cars have all the nav stuff down here. And the drive select is up here for the non nav cars. The drive select is down here. And the nav and the, the radio controls are up here. See the difference? The knobs are down here versus up here. Up here, there's just a blank area. Well, not a blank area, but it's like a slot. For this one, that slot is gone. It's replaced with the controls. Very weird. 
The non-nav cars are super undesirable because of this. However, this interior spec kind of makes up for it. Wow, it doesn't even have the Bang & Olufsen either. What a weirdly spec car. As you can see, no silver rings on the speaker grills. This is literally a base premium plus. Literally a base premium plus. Nothing fancy about this premium plus. It doesn't even have nav. The only thing fancy is the color combination, um, which will add value. However, not having any options is going to take away a significant amount of value. 2014 with 76,000 miles, they're asking for 22 grand. I'd say because it's a base model, having not even nav, no Bang & Olufsen, nothing like that. Um, I'd be willing to go up to $16,000. I know what you guys are thinking. It's a little bit high, right? But it doesn't have any options. So it has it like... Oh, say it's a little bit high, but it is a really nice spec. The two-tone interior with the aluminum and the red exterior is super desirable. Um, you know, someone's going to buy that doesn't really care about that other stuff. They just want a nice looking car. So in conclusion, which car should you buy? Which model year? What spec? I suggest in order to get the best value, getting a 2014 because it's going to come with the most uh, standard options. It's going to come with drive select standard, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, you want to get a 2014, you can get a premium plus. That is perfectly fine. If you get a 2014 premium plus, uh, just keep in mind that that is going to be the last model year with the transmission issues. So you want to make sure the transmission is good. Also with 2015 and 2016, the, uh, premium plus and the premium became way more, um, similar for the 2013, 2014, there were a little bit more differences between them. 2015, a lot of features became uh, standard on premium plus. So if you want to get the most standard features, while still balancing that with the best value, you get a 2015. 2016s are just going to be hard to find. They're just rarer example. They're rarer um, in terms of production numbers. You're not going to find as many examples. 2015 is going to be the perfect spot if you want the best equipped cars at the best price. Um, 2014 is just going to be simply the most convenient cars uh, in terms of price. 2013s avoid. 2016s are hard to find. 2013 or 2014s and 2015s are going to be your sweet spot for the B8.5. Um, 2015s obviously are going to be nicer and hold a higher premium than the 2014s. However, they overlap in 90% of their features. So if you want the best deal, just look for a 2014. I suggest getting a cool color like this red right here, or maybe getting a Nagaro blue, or maybe um, like a white or a black. Stay away from the silvers. Silvers are super common on these cars, and the grays, there's going to be kind of a range of silvers and grays for these Audis. Uh, the white's cool, but obviously it's kind of bleeding into the silver. The black is also bleeding into that as well. So I recommend just getting a cool color, getting a cool color combo. The two-tone interior combos are always going to be good. Um, the white's obviously not going to be for everybody because of the staining issue for the interior. Like for me, I really wouldn't want to get a white interior because it's just going to cause issues in the future. Um, but other than that, that pretty much wraps it up. Car is a great car, supercharged V6 engine with very little problems. This car is super stout, super reliable. The only thing that really knocks it when compared to a BMW or Mercedes equivalent is the styling. It's just a boring car. It blends in with regular traffic. It looks like an A4. Um, yeah, it sounds pretty good. The supercharger wine does give it a little bit of an edge, but it's just very subdued. And that's what Audi does best. They make very quality products that are very subdued so people can drive around in luxury without being ostentatious or being judged. That's literally what they do. Even though now like technology is kind of, or the technology in the Audi is kind of creeping up there to the point where it's looking super high tech and that image is kind of going away. Um, but they're being outshone by Mercedes and BMW. So they're kind of still holding their segment of the market. If you guys have any questions about what I went over today, just leave a comment in the description. You know, what's funny is that people who find my videos and like them, like they, they, they enjoy the content and they appreciate it. They never say anything, but the people that hate it, they're the ones that actually vo voice their opinion. So I end up getting a lot of hate, uh, relatively compared to, you know, the overall amount of comments. So if you liked the video, let me know, just let me know if you liked it. I don't always just want to hear that it's bad. <laughs> let me know that you liked it too. If you did, if you didn't, that's fair. You don't have to like it, but if you did like the video, let me know. You can either like the video or leave a comment subscribe to the channel tomorrow and Friday. I'll be going over some Japanese and Korean competitors. So some Asian competition to the cars we've been going over. So to recap this week, I'm going over cars that kind of are in second place when compared to the M cars, compared to the AMGs, compared to the RS cars. These are cars you can get instead 
These are cars that are better daily drivers than those cars. So they're actually better for normal everyday people and normal everyday usage. Um, and they're cheaper. So we went over the 340i on Monday. Yesterday we did the C43. Today we did the S4. Tomorrow I'm going to be going over the Kia Stinger, which is an interesting uh, car in its own right because it's Kia's first entry into this kind of segment, rear-wheel drive twin turbo V6 car. So we're going to take a look and see what we can find in terms of spec. Let's see what they offered for the Stinger. The Stinger is a really good car in terms of value. It's just what kills a Stinger is the fact that it shares its interior components with the rest of Hyundai's and Kia's. You can just tell like the font style that they use is very characteristic. The way the buttons are laid out, the materials of everything are super Hyundai Kia. And I mean, Genesis kind of upgrades that in a little bit but even on like a genesis g90 you're looking at the buttons they still have the same font style as a kia and that kind of is annoying so we're going to go over the kia steering tomorrow look at all the trim levels tell you how exactly to get the best deals and then on friday we're going to be doing the q50 so i'll see you guys tomorrow with another video again hope you guys got a lot of value about this one today i hope you guys enjoyed it um have a great rest of your wednesday happy hump day i'll see you guys tomorrow and as always have a good one peace and be safe i'll see you with the next video tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Kia Stinger at noon.